In part one, Saadi's senior pulse pathologist, Jenny Davidson, provided background on the beet western yellows virus. When the virus spread through canola crops in three southern states during the 2014 autumn, it was the green peach aphid that carried the disease. Senior entomologist with the South Australian Research and Development Institute, Greg Baker, takes up the story. Green peach aphid is by far the most efficient uh, vector of uh, beet western yellows virus, which is a, a purely a, an aphid transmitted virus. It's fortunately not seed borne, but in terms of the aphids that are known to be capable of transmitting the virus, green peach aphid is by far the most uh, efficient of those uh, several aphids at uh, transmitting this particular virus, uh, reputed to be around a sort of a 97% uh, efficiency level. In hindsight, it's now clear the combination of plentiful host material and optimal weather conditions resulted in more generations of green peach aphids being produced compared to a typical season. Uh, it's important to recognise that all aphids are female and able to produce uh, young and um, subject to, as I said, subject to uh, the prevailing temperature conditions are capable of producing um, you know, a good perhaps half a dozen or so aphids per day under, under optimal, uh, well young uh, aphids per day under, under optimal conditions. So any one aphid could produce how many offspring? 40, 50 or, or possibly uh, somewhat greater but in, in that general range is my understanding. And over how long a period would that be? I mean, it, it d depends on the prevailing weather conditions but that, that could occur over uh, you know, one to two weeks. As the density of the aphid population increases on a host plant, an important developmental change begins to occur, making it possible for the aphids to migrate. They produce wings. Under particular conditions of which uh, aphid crowding is, is one such condition that stimulates the production of the wing forms which then allows for that further uh, dissemination of the population with its, um, with its virus load. Where they fly to is only as far as the next available host plant. So it's very likely the early sown canola was conveniently emerging as any weeds sprayed at sowing time began to die off. Adding to the complexity of the infestation across state borders is that little is known about what triggers a long distance migration and uncertainty about whether there really was a wave of infestations from South Australia across Victoria and into New South Wales or if it was just that many infestations occurred about the same time. We believe it was essentially sort of an in situ uh, situation that basically mirrored what was occurring in South Australia. It's just that um, we, perhaps as a result of having sown in some districts a little earlier than what occurred um, interstate, um, the problem was first witnessed uh, just that little bit. Uh, just a little earlier in South Australia than it was um, in, in the east. Nearly 60% of canola samples sent to Horsham for disease identification came back as positive for beet western yellows virus. But if canola is infected after the rosette growth stage, it will survive, although yield is likely to be reduced. What halted the aphids from spreading the virus even further was a change in the weather. From our um, field observations in South Australia, um, the cold, wet winter conditions that had really set in by, by late June and prevailed right through um, July and um, uh, into early August um, had uh, taken a considerable toll on green peach aphid infestation levels. It does appear as if the frost that, uh, of which unfortunately there was some very serious uh, frost activity in uh, various districts in August, um, uh, that may well have taken a further toll on, green, on the surviving um, green peach aphid uh, infestations. It's not possible to manage the virus, so managing the vector is the default strategy. Recommendations from the forensic analysis will likely focus on pre-season farming practices such as control of weeds and volunteer crops and canola sowing rates. 
but it is known that a, a higher sowing rate will help in terms of uh, getting that early uh, sort of cabbaging over of the crop and uh, reducing its likely uh, a colonisation by those early aphid uh, flights. Standing stubble retention helps in that regard and well applied um, neonicotinoid seed treatments and one of the things that we would hope to learn from uh, the um, GRDC funded a survey is uh, you know, whether or not there are substantial differences in susceptibility between different canola varieties and be able to factor all of that information into future management. Greg Baker, Senior Entomologist with SARDI. In the final part of this retrospective on the beet western yellows virus and green peach aphid, what was learnt about the extent of the aphids resistance to chemical control?